What is a crystal? <clears throat> a crystal is an assemblage of molecules which form a unit cell of its identity in space. And from that unit cell, a consciousness is given to it, a soul, if you want. Once that soul enters that unit cell, it draws to itself the replication of its image. We speak of man being made to the image and likeness of God. We can see that in action when you grow crystals. I've grown thousands of them. It's the most exciting thing you can involve yourself with. You first must develop a seed crystal. That is, you let matter go into a state of solution. You take water, you dissolve salt, sodium chloride, in the water. A salt is a crystal. When it's in solution, it is clear, transparent, light will pass through it with no distortion except the normal refraction of the change in refractive index from the glass vessel to the water. You then evaporate the water down to a point where you get to supersaturation. Now, what does supersaturation mean? It means that the water molecules moving around in the, I'm sorry, the sodium chloride molecules moving around in the water are getting closer and closer together. And finally, supersaturation is these molecules are bumping. The free space has been reduced and they hit. When they hit, energy takes place, exchange, and they start then to the next moment they hit, they fuse. They lock into place and you get what we call precipitation. It falls out of solution. Super saturation. When they fall out of solution, that precipitation is a polycrystal. Poly means many different directions. Now you take a polycrystalline particle. You take one under the microscope and you pull a single crystal of one of these little tiny crystals out and you mount it on the tip of a wire, silver wire or copper as well. You then put it into a saturated solution. That means that these molecules are jiggling together but they're not bumping or crowding into each other. The moment you put that crystal in, the face, the outer face of that crystal will dissolve. It comes to equilibrium with the mass that you have, and suddenly a remarkable thing takes place. From that melt, from that crystal, an information has been transported to the fluid to say, I am ready now to grow into the form I am to be. It releases a consciousness. And then as you hold your temperature constant and the vibration around the room, the thing will start to accrete one unit cell at a time. A unit cell is the smallest fraction of the combination, let's say, of sodium and chlorine that it will retain the identity of sodium chloride. You go below that, it is only a sodium atom and a chlorine atom or ion. Now, I'm going to come right back to where I started. I made, in 1961, a major discovery that I could grow crystals precisely when I applied sound to them. When I found the note 
for a particular class or category of crystals I wish to grow. And when I sounded that note, either in the solution or in the furnace, that crystal grew perfectly. I got a magnificent single crystal with all of the faces developed and in exact pattern of symmetry and form. This is a crystal of quartz. When, for example, sodium chloride we have been working with emerges into the solid form that you can hold in your hand, the unit cell of sodium chloride is cubic. Each side is equal, parallel, and of the same basic dimension. So you deal with a perfect cube. This is one of the basic forms in nature. The next shape we have in the crystallographic world is hexagonal or six-sided. <clears throat> the shaping that quartz takes in its evolution and development of a crystal form is hexagonal. The reason for that is the unit cell of quartz has a hexagonal form to it. Its memory unit is hexagonal. The unit cell of sodium chloride is cubic. <clears throat> the consciousness of a crystal growing is where that unit cell oscillates, protects, projects its vibration in space, its identity of the square cubic cubicness of sodium chloride or the hexagonalness of the quartz. There is something beyond purely that vibration, and I call this the soul of the crystal. Its initiation of a life force to bring matter into being. That is where sound comes. It is an initiatory process. When you sound the right note, the crystal starts beating in a symmetrical form, and these unit cells drop into place and start to build the spiral of the life form of this crystal and they grow in a right-handed spiral as they emerge from the unit, the nucleating site. Now, as they drop into place, they develop what we call faces. This is a face. It's a termination from the crystal. It will grow in a spiral like this and will stop here, develop, develop here until it's formed all six sides. The reason it stops is the following. Initiation of growth is here, and because of the forces, the temperature, the vibration, the oscillating temperatures that exist in the atmosphere surrounding this, and above all, the nucleating food of the fluid, so, uh, silicic acid, it will grow and develop in this way. Now, when there is interruption of the growth, you see it as little transverse ridges. It means that there was a momentary interruption in the pattern of growth of this crystal. Each of these angles here, in this face versus this, are identical to all quartz crystals throughout the world. We have what we call a goniometer. We set this on and we measure these angles. We compare them to a handbook we can identify quartz. We then identify the termination. A crystal will come to completion. It will complete its life cycle. And in the process of completion, this is the story of the completion of this crystal's growth. Come to the end of its life. Its work is done. It's time to move on. And it leaves the shell, the remnants of its growth that you see here. 
leaves the remnants and the shell of its growth. To put the life back into the crystal, you need but breathe on it. Because what breath does is initiates the vibrating, oscillating action that brought this into being. It's a very, very important statement. 